Yeah. Like her and the yeah. drugs were talking. Yeah. That's I what remember. a hamburger's all, all about. about. Welcome to Maker's Hustle, the podcast about turning your passion into a profession. This is episode 33 for Monday, February 27th, 2017. I had to check to make sure February had 27 days. I was like, oh, that's cutting it a little close. I'm your host, Bill Lavolsi, and here are my co-hosts, Amy Davis-Roth. Hey, Amy. Hey. And Jeffrey Moore. Hey, Jeff. Back in the flesh. <laughs> Were you know. out of the flesh for a minute? <laughs> I don't know. I, you see the pause. I was like, oh, I need something new. <laughs> I applaud the effort. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Took me a whole two seconds to come up with that. Well, two seconds well spent. I want to take a moment to thank everybody on Patreon, but especially our top supporters, Luis Gonzalez and Ryan Ahoro. So thank you all so much. Thanks, thank guys. You, thank you. If you would like to support the show, you can check us out at patreon.com slash makers hustle. Yeah. So Do what's it. everybody doing this week? All right, I'll go first because mine is short and sweet. Yeah, go before I've been you sick. die. <laughs> I've been sick, and I've been doing a lot of sleeping, and it hasn't helped. And um, no, I've I've been doing a couple of things. First thing that I've been doing, which is probably the most exciting, but not really exciting, is I've put in a couple of offers on houses, and I've been in a couple of bidding wars, and I've lost every one. <laughs> which is unfortunate and That's it's really hard. because right now the new york city market is crazy like there's a lot of people looking for houses and there's not a lot of houses available especially ones that that i'm actually looking for so i've been doing a lot of housing research looking at a lot of properties i've been traveling all over the city well all over the bronx anyway other thing that i've been doing is i've been doing a lot of research um like i told you guys last time i'm trying to make a spiro robot and so trying to figure out how to do that, really the, the hard part is I need a bigger, I've realized that I need something to make the sphere. I need, I'm probably going to order the sphere. You can actually order like acrylic or, um, I forgot what it, what was it called? I forgot. Well, I can order, I can order them from California. So I'll be coming your way. Um, and you could pick the different sizes. The problem with the ones that you order is from a couple of places, they come in two in two half spheres, um, and what happens is when they make those molds, the edges aren't completely like spherical. They kind of get straight, which is unfortunate because that's going to mess up the actual. When you put them together, it's going to be like maybe a half of an inch, quarter of an inch, where it's not a pure sphere. It's going to be kind of flat. So I'm trying to figure out how to get around that if I'm going to order one or if I'm just going to 3D print one, which would mean that I need to design it in smaller parts because I have a tiny 3D printer and then put them together, which would suck. So I'm just trying to figure out what route I'm going to go with, which one is cheapest, which one is most cost effective. And I might actually go to like a community maker space that has a larger 3D printer, which would mean that I only have to print. I have to print still the same size, but it'll be less pieces which is less work so i don't know what i'm gonna do but that's what happens when you have limited resources you got to figure things out be flexible and yeah. just you know try and figure stuff out like as you go this sounds like a this sounds like a jimmy question what do you mean like about the, the, the whole ha- no the whole like how to get a perfect sphere because you oh, know you could oh. you could cast it yourself like if you make a mold from something you could then cast it Ooh. and then that would so, cost you less money now that I think about it, he did make those those mold guys in that pen video, in the lathe pen video. Yeah. That might be a... See, the problem was because I don't have any experience with making molds, uh, I was like, screw me making the mold. The only yeah. way that I can make a mold is by printing a mold because I'm lazy and I don't feel like learning multiple things at the same time. I just want to stick to what I know for this project. But that is a good point. I might have to reach out to him on that. How yeah. big does the circle need to be? Can you get so like I'm a trying, buoy or something that's already uh, like something? You so know, that's something that floats. So here's what most people do. Um, most people have done things like I don't, you know, the balloon when you are at, um, when you're in a pool, the balloon pool ball. You know that, that ball? Like a like beach people, ball? 
Yes, beach ball. That's what it's called. <laughs> yes. Sorry. People do the beach ball and they use that as like the basic um, outline of the body. And then what they do is they get paper mache and they harden it out and then they use fiberglass and they make it super duper hard. Yeah. yeah. And I don't feel like doing all that. That's, I mean, <laughs> it's not that I don't feel like doing all that. It's just a lot of different things. And then beach balls don't come in the size. Like I'm, I don't want it to be that big. I want it to be a little bit smaller than that. Probably about the size of a foot of a, a basketball rather than a beach ball so i would have to find a beach ball that's about the size of a basketball which would require me to go and look and i can probably find it online um and then i got a paper mache it and then it never works the first time that you do it so you end yeah. up having to make like four or five paper mache balls and everybody that i've seen do it um it seems to me like they've done that fiberglass and paper mache a couple of times so it comes out right for them or at least in the videos it's like their fifth or sixth one so um, I'm just trying to figure out what is the most cost effective way, which will give me the best product. Plus, I want it to kind of be see through. So that's why I wanted to order the um, acrylic one. But it's not acrylic. I can't remember what I can't remember what material it is. Styrene. Like starts with a C. Can't remember. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. It's the cold that's interfering with my brain power. <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a clear one. Um, I'm gonna find it. That was bothering me because I have it saved. But, uh, yeah, I kind of want to see through because I think it looks cooler if you can see everything that's working on the inside. Yeah. Um, if you do the paper mache, then it'll be kind of, well, definitely blocked off. You can paint it in different colors, but then you don't see all the inner workings of the robot. So Well, and it's it's. I, know, I think man. it's better that way anyway if you want more options. You can always take something clear and make it not clear by just adding paint. It's really yeah. hard to go the other way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you got that right. You know. Yeah. Huh. I can't remember how to get. To, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to you because I forgot what that material is called. That's all right. And it's very it's very it's a good material, and it doesn't break. Well, I don't know if it doesn't break, but it's very sturdy. So that was the other thing that I was looking for. It's not acrylic because acrylic isn't a good material. It sucks. I hate acrylic. But um, yeah. So that was my week. Jeff hates acrylic. Okay, Amy. How about you? <laughs> Well, I've just stopped painting in acrylic paints based on this conversation. <laughs> but uh, other than that, this week, I have been doing a lot of restocking because I sold out of a lot of my designs lately, which is great. I just made a bunch more uh, Nevertheless She Persisted and Resist Necklaces. I'm restocking those and weird stuff like dancing skeletons and Feynman diagrams and a bunch of stuff for Surly Ramex. And I'm at the same time getting ready for WonderCon, which is at the end of next month. And it takes me a while to get ready for it because it's a big deal and it's a huge event and there's like thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I have a corner booth at this event this year, which is a huge big deal. Those booths cost like $2,000. So I have to make sure that I am prepared to make my money back. So I'm trying to get my book done in time that my little my little comic book about robots on the moon Enceladus, and that's coming along nicely. We're at the final stages of that. We're just redoing the cover, and you know it's getting spell checked and all that. And then it, we're getting a copy from the publisher, and then after that, I'll be able to order however many copies I want because I'm self-publishing, of course, because mm -hmm. DIY, baby. Uh, hopefully, in the future, though, someone will see this book, and then I'll get a book deal to do a second one. And I've already got a bunch of ideas for that, so I'm excited about that. So what else have I been doing? Oh, I've been super duper depressed because the news and life and politics and everything, but we'll get into that. But whenever I'm depressed, I tend to fall back on doing artwork that really sort of centers me and makes me happy. And so I've been doing a lot of nature drawings. Like I just did these really beautiful tulips and I just did another drawing of Black Eyed Susans, which are my favorite, and I'm turning all those into products on Red Bubbles. So even when I'm down, I am trying to find ways to, you know, make stuff that makes me happy that I can also turn into products. So if you check out my shop on Red Bubble, there's a few new designs, floral designs, and there'll be more coming soon. It's Red Bubble Surly Amy. You can find it either by searching that or just surlyamy.redbubble.com, and you can check out those uh, new designs that I'm doing. And yeah, a lot of restocking, a lot of evaluating life. I am still working on my, you know, keep track of the things that are slowly changing around us as we are, you know, engulfed in this sort of fascist government that is taking hold of our community. And I haven't done any 
pieces this week because so many things have happened that I can't focus on just one. So I think I'm going to do a piece on the fact that they're taking away rights from trans students in schools and forcing them to go into the wrong bathroom, like not the bathrooms that they choose, which is like such a weird thing that the government should even have anything to do with that it boggles my mind. So I think I'm going to do some sort of piece on that, but I'm not really sure how to go about doing that. So I'm still thinking about it. And then there's a lot of other really strange things happening. The, they just announced that they're going to go after the states that have legalized recreational marijuana, which is my state and a lot of other states. So that's another issue that's sort of bothering me. Uh, lo lots of awful things happening in the news, which has overwhelmed me, which is sort of going to be, I think, the topic of this, this episode once we get into it. So I'll let Bill talk a little bit. And then we'll get into it. All right. Okay, so uh, let's see. What did I do this week? Um, the No Lathe Pen Challenge is over. Judging is in progress. There's over 200 entries, over 18 hours of video, so it's going to take a little while. I've already gotten a few it's emails amazing. saying like, hey, how do I know if I won? You'll know. I <laughs> promise you'll know. Okay, right now, like yeah. 18 hours of video is a lot, and everybody I picked as yeah. a judge is also like full-time something else. So, you know, they have to work through this whole list full of videos. It's going to take a little while. Just, you know, bear with us. But it's uh, it's an amazing turnout, and I'm super happy about it. And just I can't wait to do it again next year. Like, I'm already excited for what I'm going to do next time. So that's cool. Um, right. My week is kind of a mess, actually, because Monday was a holiday. Yeah. And so when my wife has yeah. the day off work, I try to spend time with her because it's a nice thing Same. to do. I try to spend time with Bill's wife on her days <laughs> off as well. <laughs> but I mean, my husband had the day off too, so I, I do the same thing. I'm terrible when he has a day off. Is it the same for you? Yeah, though? I don't get anything done. Yeah. But you know, family's important. Uh, yeah. But the problem is, then this morning, uh, we're recording this on a Thursday, uh, she got her wisdom teeth taken out, which basically means I was able oh. to work Tuesday and Wednesday. That's not enough time to like shoot and edit and publish a video. So I have most of a video done. I'm really hoping I can pull it together and get it put out. Cause you know, I promised a video a week and I would really like to stick to it and it's been going really well and I don't want to mess it up already. <laughs> you know, we're understanding bill. If things, if you weren't <laughs> able to make it or maybe it was a day late, we'd understand. Yeah. All right. yeah. Well, it might be a day late, but I, uh, it's still going to happen. All right. So let's see. Um, I had a fan actually say, hey, I want to buy you a tool. What do you need? So it actually just showed up like as we started recording. I got a new like ultra quiet air compressor, Ooh. which is good because the old one is loud as hell, like really super loud. And anytime I would turn it on, it would scare the cat. There's only two tools that the cat is scared of. One is the vacuum and the other one is the air compressor. And now I have a super quiet air compressor. So I'm halfway towards like getting rid of that problem. You know what that means? Your cat might have been traumatized. No, it means that the vacuum is a natural enemy of all pets. It's true. Like every pet yeah, hates vacuums. Um, well, actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't I think that. I've ever had a pet that didn't hate the vacuum. Yeah. Uh, and then I got uh, I got some stickers from Hugo, SA Maker, all the way in South oh, Africa. Yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he sent me a whole bunch of stickers. That was so cool. So thank you, Hugo. That was great. Nice. I, I, I'm really bad about this. Like, I get stickers all the time, and I always forget to say thank you. So if you sent me stickers, I did get them, and thank you very much. And I'll try to, like, show them more in the videos, but I'm terrible about remembering to say thank you. I got this sticker. Oh, Daryl. Okay. Daryl. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I have one of those yeah, on my cool. bandsaw. But, yeah, that's what I did this week. So I'm trying to uh, get a video out and trying to take care of my wife, who is miserable. Oh, that's it does. It sucks a lot. We'll get through it. Yeah, wisdom teeth are the worst. It's true. So that actually segues nicely into this week's topic, which is uh, self care. We are talking about self care. Self care is exactly what it sounds like. It's taking care of yourself. And uh, right. sometimes that's hard to do. Episode over. Yeah, yeah. Episode <laughs> over. Thank everybody, you. go take a nap. <laughs> No, like, no, but a lot of people don't realize, like, the concept of self-care. It's very popular in, like, the feminist communities and the activist communities. It's a very important topic that people have to be reminded of now and then. Because if you get really 
obsessed with a project or something that you're doing and like I said it happens a lot with the activists because they're constantly battling against something that's bigger than them and so they can get worn down and the same thing can happen if you're a maker and you're creating and you get sort of like overwhelmed with your work or you get too obsessed with your work you will forget to do simple things like eat and sleep and take care of yourself and so sometimes it's important to be reminded that you need to have what's called self-care you need to in some cases schedule a day out of the week that is just for you and i know like me and bill mentioned that when our significant others have the day off from their regular jobs we like to spend the day with them and that's sort of what I look at as my self-care days. It's days where I, you know, do my best to separate myself from my business. I can never be completely separate because I have to be able to answer emails from customers and I have to still pack and ship orders and things like that. But it's really, really, really important to take time for yourself and to make sure you're doing the most basic things that a lot of us forget about, especially if you have any kind of mental illness like bipolar disorder or anything like that you got to remember take your medicine if you if you don't have a situation like that you still have to remember to eat you have to remember to sleep you know like exercise like i've recently gotten back into exercising full time again which is like Way killing me right Way now like i yeah i just i seriously just started getting back into it like two days ago so like i was joking around on twitter i'm like a shark at this point because as soon as i stop moving i can't walk because i'm so sore sharks like, I have to walk have, at all well they have to keep swimming or they die that's what they really? say yeah. About yeah yeah and so oh. i have to keep walking like I'm after this every day yeah after this podcast i'm gonna be like limping out of here because i'm so sore from working out but it's all these little things that sort of add up that are really important that you have to have to maintain to sort of, you know, make sure you're, you're like a machine and make sure you're running in, in proper order. Yeah. My bad yeah. one is I always forget to eat. Yeah. But it's, that's yeah, what my husband it's does. It's the worst. Like, um, the nice thing is, uh, my wife works about three miles from our, uh, apartment. So I can go like meet up with her and have lunch every day, which is great. You know, she has oh, an hour long lunch break. Nice. So, uh, like we'll figure out what we're eating and then we'll spend time together and actually sit down for an hour but what I didn't realize is there are days when it's like, oh, all my coworkers are going out for lunch. I'm going to go with them. Or, you know, we have some kind of special event over lunch. I'm going to stay here. And those are the days when 5 o'clock rolls around and I go, I'm really hungry. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. It's because I forget to eat. Yeah. I forget to eat. I'll get so wrapped up in what I'm doing that lunch is just not a thing that happens. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the – I skip lunch all the time and not because I'm busy, just because I'm lazy. I don't I, – I need to do better with that. But I will say this, um, if you don't take care of yourself, it's like when you when you get into that space where you're working really hard and you're doing long nights, early mornings, you're doing a lot of different things, you're mentally exhausted, you really open up your body to becoming available to getting sick. So that's, I, that's why I think that I'm sick right now, because the last about two weeks have been a lot for You've me. You've been going too like, hard. I haven't been sleeping that much. Yeah. And out of nowhere i'm like I, and i never get sick this is the first time i've been sick in like two years and i i just admitted that i was sick before i thought i had allergies because it was just like my nose so i'm like ah, i can't be but so for me i think because i wasn't doing a good enough job taking care of myself i opened myself up to coming down with a little common cold and it's not that bad but now because i didn't take time to take care of myself before I got to take care of myself now, which means that I'm not getting as much work done. So, you know, that productivity, my productivity is shot for the week. Yeah. For the week. And I got, and it's crazy because I'm, I have a day off. Like today, didn't go to work. Tomorrow, not going to work. I, I'm not because I'm sick, but because I, I did some work on Saturday. So I got a comp day this Friday. And if I was healthy, I would be able to get so much stuff done. Oh, tomorrow, I'm sleeping tomorrow. It's over. I'm, I already made up my mind. Yeah. And, and so, you know, that so it's not only is it important to do it just so that your work doesn't slip in the moment, but you want to make sure you take care of yourself so it doesn't suffer long term. Because now I'm going to be a day behind in, in productivity just off of the fact that today I didn't do anything. I've been sleep all day. Tomorrow I'm not doing anything. I need to sleep. And um, I'm going to try and get back into the swing of things on Saturday. But, um, you know. I need to, this is, this is what happens when you don't take care of yourself. So don't be like Jeff. 
<laughs> or be like Jeff in a lot of ways because one right. of the things that is really important and they have done like little studies with business people one of the best things that you can do is to exercise on a regular basis people that exercise are more productive they have they're they're better able to retain things in fact if you read while you're on the treadmill or if you exercise while listening to something on your headphones you're more likely to retain it because the blood mm. flow is going through your brain as well as your body so mm. there's a lot of really great things that accompany exercise for business people so it's a really great stress reliever it's a it's a really excellent thing and if you can't exercise like jeff does because he's amazing and he does football and all this stuff that i couldn't even I'm imagine retiring by the way just, just walk walk places you know go for you know a 10 minute walk every day if you can and that's another great thing for self-care you know get out of your studio get out of your workspace for just a few minutes like go anywhere else and that can help you a lot yeah. those are some yeah. things yeah yeah i think good habits practicing good habits is important and here's the thing um a lot of people think it's easy well i don't know how many people think it's easy that was a very general term but i think a lot of people think taking care doing things like meditation and doing things like going out for a walk and doing things like just stepping away the first time you do it you're gonna feel like yeah, this is good for me. And then when you get out there, you're like, oh, I can't stop thinking about work. It takes time to get used to being able to take care of yourself. It takes time to get used to being able to detach and being able to isolate your work and isolating your play and all that stuff. Like those are skills that you have to develop. And so the first time that you say, you know what, I do need to take Bill, Jeff and Amy's advice. I do need to do some self-care. I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go to the gym. That first time you go, it's going to suck. Yeah. And you're probably going to be there like, ah, oh, I can't I get back this. to the office. Yeah. 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 So yeah it's horrible. Keep at it. Keep practicing <laughs> because it is it's horrible first, at first. That first week is going to be hard for you. But I guarantee yeah. once you get into the swing of things and once you start getting used to it, your body gets used to it, your mind gets used to it. You know, you're going to see the difference in the productivity. You're going to see a difference in the work. Um, and that's that's my advice to you guys, because. You know, even f even for somebody like me who likes to, well, I don't like to work out, but knows the benefits of working out um, and using that as my way to detach myself and, and get my body physically engaged with something else. You know, I don't like going to the gym and it literally the hardest part of going to the gym is getting it's out of going. bed and going. Once yeah. I'm there, I'm cool. I, can, I, I get into right into it. But getting there is hard. So, you know, even that detaching part and starting something is going to be very difficult for some of you. Uh, but once you get into it, if you trust the process, you'll be all right. Yeah, that's the hardest part, getting started. I definitely agree with that. In fact, I sort of fell off the wagon of working out because, you know, I did it a lot and I've gotten really out of shape. And so now I'm like trying to get back into it. And I find it's like any sort of habit building exercise. You have to find what works for you and then just force yourself at first and then you're going to start to want to do it. And so what I do is I get up every morning and I have a cup of coffee and then I go work out and there's no time for me to make any excuses about it. You know, it, and that really helps me. And then it just sort of becomes something that I subconsciously know that I'm going to do. So I roll out of bed and I put on my workout clothes and then I'm going to go work out. And that's how I've always done it in the past. And starting over again right now has been really difficult. But I know, like you said, the benefits really outweigh the negative. And so it's just about building positive habits in your life. And it will definitely help you with your work if you have some sort of a, you know, a release. And if, if you can't, if you're not completely like able to do regular exercise like i said just take a walk or find something else that you can do that has nothing to do with your work and it will really help you clear your mind and sort of find that focus that you may lose when you're feeling down yeah normally. or you know if you if you can't leave your your workplace or whatever you can't go for a walk seriously just like step away from your your desk or your work table or whatever it is that you're doing Step away, stretch, get a drink of water, clear your head, think about something else for a minute. Something mm -hmm. as simple as that, like just taking a five-minute break. You know how many people I know? Okay, you know how if you work an eight-hour job, you're supposed to get a certain number of breaks, like by law? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people mm -hmm. I know who don't take them? Yeah. It's like you're not doing anybody any favors. You have those for a reason. Yeah. And they're, they're not going <laughs> to tell you to take them. <laughs> yeah. They don't want you to take them. It's so... it's. I don't know if you guys heard about like there's a a wave of you know there's a wave of 
human resources that or not wave there's it's like a theory to human resources and benefits packages that is giving different employees depending on where you are unlimited time yeah off. i don't know if you guys ever uh-huh. heard of that and there was a research study that was shown like the thought process was staff will be happier people will take more time off if they had unlimited time off because what was happening was before when you gave people a set time they would accrue it for such like for weeks they would accrue like weeks and months and they would never use it same thing with sick time they would have all this time but they would never use it and so people had the bright idea maybe if we give them unlimited time they might be more inclined to use it and feel more flexible with with using it and the study was actually showing that people actually use less time when they had unlimited time than when they actually had a set time so there's kind of like this struggle between how organizations are providing those type of benefits i remember that and um it's it's very interesting. I was reading an article. I'm like, man, if I had unlimited time, you would never see. <laughs> oh, me. I know. Well, like they the, just uh, require people to be there. The reasoning at the was beginning yeah, of the. They they found out that people were afraid to take it because like they didn't want to be seen yeah. as the slacker who was never there. Yeah. Right now, mm-hmm. and I know people like that. You know, I know people who bank their time forever. I was always the person mm-hmm. who was like running at the raggedy edge of like I might have a day. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like if I get sick, if I have sick time and I don't feel too hot, I'm not going to work. Because yeah. I have sick time, and I'm going to get paid to stay home. And you know what? I'm also not going to infect anybody in the office. Because I'm a considerate, thoughtful person. <laughs> yes. I use my sick time because I wake up and my heartbeat is irregular. Oh, sick day. <laughs> like, oh, wait, hold up. Did I, did I forget to breathe? Did I miss a breath? No, that's, I use my sick time like that. But, um, you know, that that's very important because those you have those days for a reason. Now, people... Because we live in a product, in a capitalistic product drip, productivity driven society, you know that that is a true thing that people are concerned about. Like being viewed as a slacker, being looked at by your supervisor as somebody who is utilizing all of these days when really they don't have to. And then some people are like, if I take two, three days off, then I got to get a note. And all those things are are absolutely true things that you have to worry about. But at the same time. At the same time, productivity is going up. Pay is not going up. People are being at these jobs and jobs are not taking care of them the way that they should. So my perspective is if I got time and I got an irregular heartbeat, I'm taking that day. Yeah. If I wake up one day and it, the sun isn't up and it's giving me a headache or something random i'm not going in and i use those days all i use i use what i call mental health oh yeah i call them mental health days like yo i send an email look i need a mental health day i ain't coming in today and that's it yeah and i utilize those all the time and and half the time you know it's not something that's severely wrong with me or i don't really need to utilize that time but it's because i know that they're not going to tell me to do it and they're going they're already making a killing off me anyway so i'm utilizing this time i'm gonna get some of my get some of that value back yeah. well the um let's tie this back to you know making stuff and working for yourself because <laughs> i think no 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 it's because it's a good point no, you're right, you're right. and because i think a lot of our audience you know has the day job or the desk job or whatever and they're trying to build that dream on the side which is awesome and mm-hmm. it's exciting um, but it also encourages you to overwork. But once you're out on your yeah. own and you work for yourself, if you take a day, nobody's paying you. So mm. it can yeah. be a source of anxiety. You know, it's like, I really need to rest. Like, you can feel it. You know, you, you know when you don't feel right. You can tell. Yeah. Um, but if you if you don't take that day, uh, I'm sure you've both heard the, the phrase, an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you can. You, Apple a day keeps the doctor yeah, away. Yeah, like that. <laughs> but you know, you can either take care of yourself by taking a day off now to rest and you know, like take some NyQuil and take a nap, or you'll be out the entire next week with the flu. You know, so mm. trying to fight through it usually doesn't work. And if you do anything like what I do, which involves power tools and you know, heavy equipment, trying to work sick is a really bad idea. That's how people lose fingers. So mm-hmm. just, you know, if you don't feel right, it can it can be a source of anxiety because it's like, oh, I'm going to have to work twice as hard when I come back. Yeah, but you'll be back faster, you know? And stronger. Yeah, and you're, if you don't feel right, you're going to be doing crappy work anyway, and you know it, so. Yeah, that is another thing we don't, we don't think about, and that's a good point. 
like the hazard like that's a hazard if you're walking you're not at 100 percent attention not at 100 percent strength because you're right working with power tools all it takes is you know your vision to get a little blurry one time and whoop, there goes your pinky yeah you know how many people i know who are missing a, a piece of something somewhere because they screwed something up once seriously it takes half a yeah. second so like you know you got the sniffles stay home <laughs> or go back to bed because if you're in your garage that's true that's true <laughs> if you're working i out always of your stay garage, home well, yeah they'll never leave Uh, i never leave either i'm always i'm a hermit i'm sorry that's true that's okay i'm trying to get to that that's everything that i'm every house that i'm looking at needs to have a dedicated space that i can make my workshop or else it's not even on the list that's why it's so competitive out here i can't wait to be like you guys yeah, shout out to all the people like my husband who can't take days off because they work in like the entertainment industry and places like that, and they don't like you to take time off. So I, I sort of like it's we're living in a very strange time right now where things like minimum wage is not being respected and workers' rights are not being respected, and there's you know a lot of really negative things that are happening. I think to the working class part of America right now and so I don't know it's if you can't take time off like try to find something else in your life that brings you some sort of joy and focus on that for your self care you know maybe you really love movies or you you know you like to read a book or like find something that can just be you time and it is hard sometimes working at home because there is no escape you know Mm -hmm. like where do you go when you want to get away from work you can't go home because you know that is your work so one of the really great things that was recommended to me early on when i first started my business when i was working out of an apartment it was really hard i started getting insomnia because i couldn't separate work from home life like i couldn't because i and i stopped sleeping at one point because every time i would get into bed i could see my workspace and i'd be like okay there's like 50 million things i could be doing to make the business better right now well i can't sleep and i would like go over these things again and again and again in my head and so the best advice i got was like separate your workspace from your sleep space so whatever maker job that you're doing right now that you're you're trying to build make sure you keep it out of your bedroom if at all possible oh yeah you at least have some sort of a sanctuary space that you can go to i mean we're all not lucky enough to have you know a big art studio it takes many years to get to that place like for me i can walk out of my art studio and my house is actually separate from my art studio so i walk out i walk through this yard and i go to my house and then that's a separate space but not everyone can do that so find a way that you can keep the work so that you can there's somewhere in your home or your apartment where you can go and it's not in your line of sight and that is something that really helped me a yeah lot. there's um well there's a reason i do this podcast from the room that i do it in like um because you know my my laptop is on a desk with wheels on it i could do this from wherever i want but i always do any sort of if i have phone calls to make if i have to record something if i have to edit video i do it from this room because that way this is like my office headspace you know if i'm in this room this it's just a spare bedroom when we have guests coming to town like we set up an air mattress and this is where they stay um but it never happens in the bedroom and it doesn't happen in the in the uh like the main like family room either because that's where i'm supposed to be at home So, Mm. and you know, I ran into that before when I worked from home, but like worked for somebody else. I had that problem of separating things and it's creating that sort of like, uh, compartmentalized system helps a lot. Yeah. You know, what's you, you, it's good. You say that another thing that I think that I struggle with and (laughs) it's two things that I struggle with. The first thing I struggle with is because I can. I literally work mostly from my laptop because most of the stuff that I do is computer based. Um, I take my laptop everywhere. So I'm working in the bedroom in the bed. I'm working on the couch in the bed. I'm working like I do my podcast at the kitchen table. Like it's I need to do better with that. And when we first moved into our apartment, I dedicated a space to like I have a space dedicated for just doing work. And it's in the corner. It's in the living room. You know, I can't avoid it. Even when we're about to go places and I'm sitting at my chair waiting to get ready to go, I'll stare at stuff and then I'll start fidgeting and (laughs) I end up leaving five minutes, 10 minutes late. But 
but I do need to do better. Like when I'm watching TV, I need to be engaged in watching TV. And when I'm working, I need to be working and getting it done because I end up taking forever to get things done because I'm looking down, then I look up, then I look down, and then I look up. Next thing you know, something good is happening on TV. I haven't <laughs> looked at my computer in 20 minutes. All right? And so I think I, separating work from play and dedicating specific times to work, specific time to play is another way that you can balance that and kind of take care of yourself. Because trying to do both does. Yeah, work. I think it's also. I've tried. It's, this is something that I know we've all struggled with at one time. Um, but it's also it's more fair to your family, because that way mm-hmm. when you're at work you're a hundred percent at work, which is okay as long as when you're with your family you are a hundred percent with your family, which means you're mm-hmm. not on your phone, you're not answering emails, which is something I'm really terrible at, and I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. bad at it. I'm like 50, I am 50 so, on. Yeah. yeah, like seriously, I my phone my buzzes and I'm like, oh, yeah. what just happened? Oh, hey, that's somebody, you know, we're going to make money with this person. So I need to pay attention. Yeah. I might as well have my iPad like attached to my arm because it is like always with me, like wherever I am. Like I can't. Yeah, it, that's my number one worst thing. Like no matter where I'm at, if well, I have all these different workstations set up in my art studio, there's like a, a space for drawing. There's a space for rolling out the clay. There's a space for drawing the clay. A space for painting it. You know, there's all these different workstations I have set up. And everywhere I go, that iPad's with me. People are like, "How do you tweet so much?" I'm like, "Well, because I tweet while I'm working." But it's mm-hmm. like, it's probably my biggest flaw i think is that i can't disconnect i have a really really hard time yeah yeah it's hard and i think that's something that a lot of creative people struggle because we look at everything in a creative way Mm -hmm. like it's very at least for me i can't speak for everybody but it's like when i when i was in college i played football and then when i finished playing football when I was in college, I didn't watch NFL or college games because I couldn't enjoy them as football games. I'm dang near watching it like I would watch college film. And then when I graduated and I stopped playing pro, uh, semi-pro and I started playing semi-pro, I could actually enjoy the games. Right. So now I can start playing fantasy and all that. It's like everything that I look at, I'm looking at it from a critical, analytical. How does that work? How can I make that? Oh, that would be a great idea to do that. Oh, let me go. I have my computer in front of me. Let me try and Google this. Let me try and figure this out. I've used, I've Googled everything that I've seen new since I don't know how long. And it's just, it, you do need to be able to separate yeah. the two because if you don't separate the two, well, that's, you know, it's going to drive you crazy. It's going to drive your friends and family crazy. That's as well. a skill you have to cultivate because I think, especially as like artists and creative people, you have that critical eye. You know what I mean? You have taste, you have yeah. opinions. And you'll see something that either sparks your creativity or engages that, like, analytical side. Like, for a long time, I couldn't watch certain types of movies without, like, taking them apart. You know, my wife and I are mm-hmm. sitting there on the couch, and I'm like, well, that doesn't work because this and this and this. And my wife oh my, my wife is a scientist, and every time she sees somebody using a pipetta wrong, she, like, yells at the screen. <laughs> She's like, you don't <laughs> hold it sideways! <laughs> Which I think is great. No, but you know what I mean? Like, that's learning to turn that part of you off and just be a hundred percent there it's a skill it's like any other skill but it also you know like any other skill you need to practice or you won't you you're not just gonna have it you need to develop it you have to acknowledge it then develop it first step is admitting you have a problem my problem is (laughs) my phone is glued to my hand yes yeah my ipad my name is jeffrey moore (laughs) and i am an addict i have an ipad addiction i have (laughs) Yeah. I need to find the truth. Well, I love my iPad. I take it all back. I don't care. I use that thing for everything. Like I love that thing. She's I realizing what she's talking about. She's yeah, like, no, screw I use that. it to run my business. Every time I travel, I use it to play games. I use it to draw. I love it. I'm sorry, I'm not giving it up. I could tear myself away from Twitter. Oh, you, you, more you often, can stop anytime you want, right? Yeah, I, anytime. Okay. Anytime. Yeah, she's definitely. I don't have yeah, a problem. Yeah. You have a problem, Bill. <laughs> you know what you could do you know what you could do what? and this is just a random this is a random thought all right you could have two ipads one for work and one for play now i get it i get it sounds crazy right but it think does. about it apply apply that concept to anything like let's say um it's the same thing as like when you're working you're working and when you're playing you're playing so if you had an ipad Mm-hmm. That was just dedicated to work. You would to, you would know when you pick this iPad up, it's one hundred percent work. Mm-hmm. And when you pick the other one up, it's one hundred percent play. 
right? And then okay. you just carry them both with you. Okay, so if anyone would like to buy me another iPad just for play, <laughs> just for play. please contact That's Bill. That's patreon.com slash makers hustle. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> or patreon.com slash surly. Yeah, that's probably faster. <laughs> yeah, that one will work faster. All right. Well, in the interest of uh, taking care of ourselves and maybe spending more time with our families, I'm calling this one good. Let's do some recommendations and then right. let's go do something else. All right. Hang on. Let me pull up my phone then because I will go first. So my recommendation for this week is a guy named James Bruton on YouTube. This guy is my hero. This guy, he's a cosplayer. I think he's... He's got to be engineer. I never really looked into his background. I just watched his videos. And he's got about 400 and something thousand subscribers on YouTube. So he's got to be somebody cool. Um, but he's a he designs and builds robots. He's actually building a giant humanoid one, like a life-size one. In, it looks like it's in his attic. All of his work, it looks like he does in his attic. He's big. He does cosplay. So he made an actual Iron Man suit that lights up and everything. It's freaking awesome. He also made the Hulk Buster, which is the big Iron Man suit that they used in. I can't remember which Avengers it was. I think it was Avengers 2. But he made the Hulk Buster. He's got a couple of different robots. He also made the BB-8 one. And his was like super duper high tech. So James Bruton, check him out on YouTube. X Robots, I believe, is his name, is his it's his YouTube name. Mm -hmm. Definitely a cool dude to check out. That's awesome. Amy, how about you? My recommendation, and I'm Googling it to make sure I spell her name correctly, is the artist Barbara Kruger, and it's spelled K-R-U-G-E-R. -E and she is a rather famous artist she does a lot of graphic design type stuff and the reason i'm recommending her is because she's really 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 great at sort of activist type artwork and very graphic designs that send a very specific message and she used a lot of black and white photography and then really bold words over the top and her work is incredibly poignant and inspiring and relevant today as relevant as it was when she first started doing her work she ha does a lot of stuff that's based on racism and oppression and she had a show that i went to it was at the museum of contemporary art in los angeles and you could walk through this room and it would yell profanity at you and it would yell all the different slang terms that are used against like people of color and different uh, cultures and all the sort of racist terminology it was written on the floor like insults on the walls everything it's incredible the work she does is really amazing and it really helps you sort of wake up and and see the oppression that's around you and she does it in like these amazingly simple ways and so check her out Barbara Kruger a lot of her stuff's the black and white and red in color and so you'll see a lot of people that sort of copy that style in fact I got a t-shirt from the ACLU uh, that uses her style and I'm like oh wow that looks like Barbara Kruger's work but she's really amazing and I think that her art is super relevant right now and the time that we're living in so check her out and then the other thing that i recommend is go for a walk so i started doing this like seriously this is about self-care oh a while ago i said pokemon released a bunch of new characters and they hadn't actually released them yet but they did now finally and so what i've been doing on johnny's day is off that's my husband we go for a walk down by the la river which has this huge mural which is incredible it's like the whole history of california it's the largest mural in the country and it's all along this riverbed and you can play pokemon as you walk so i oh. recommend you know Go outside if you want to play Pokemon. Do that now. Like spring is just around the corner. Like get out of your head. Get out of everything. Go somewhere. Go look at art. Go look at Barbara Kruger. Go to a museum. Like do anything that you can to clear your mind and to get inspired because we've got a long road ahead of all of us. Yeah. And I just knocked my microphone sideways <laughs> with my iPad. <laughs> all right. So my recommendation for this week is Dirty Smith. It's a YouTube channel run by a guy named Rory May. I know he listens to the podcast. Hey, Rory, what's up? Hey, Rory. And the reason I am mentioning Rory. him this week is because we're talking about self-care. And for the last two years, Rory has been putting out these, like, he's a blacksmith. And he's been putting out these incredibly detailed, like, tutorials on blacksmithing techniques. Like, this is how you do this. And, you know, if you combine all these techniques, you basically, you can make whatever you want. But they were all like 20 minutes long, right? And he puts this incredible amount of work into them. And then people don't 
share them, and he sees them getting ripped off other places on the internet. So he goes, you know what? Uh Uh-uh. He stops doing it. He starts putting out more like a a look into his life because he's a full-time blacksmith, you know? So, like, this is what he did this week. And he starts putting that tutorial-type stuff and, like, the more how-to type content over on his Patreon where he has an audience that actually values it and cares about it. And I thought that was just a really smart move. And so... And it yeah. also, you know, it helps with your sanity because you don't have people going, this yeah. is stupid, you're stupid. Cause That's why I started a Patreon, the same reason, because I was getting so much harassment and I could create a community where I knew people actually cared. Yeah. So that's And you brilliant. know what? If you yeah. want to pay me 10 bucks a month and call me an idiot, go ahead. I'll smile and take the yeah. 10 bucks. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, same here. That was, that was the exact reasoning that we had, like me and my friend Rebecca. We started our patrons because if you want to call me a name, at least you're going to have to pay me a dollar first. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I can't be bought. I am saying I can't be bought for the three cents I made from you watching my YouTube video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that's, uh, that's all for this week. But before we go, where can everybody find you? If you're looking for me, you can find me on all social media platforms at more for the F being the number four. And you can find the STEM program, which is still accepting applications at moreprogressproject.com. And everywhere that pretzels are sold. And everywhere the pretzels are <laughs> Sorry, sold. Sorry, Jeff's eating pretzels. Audio people didn't get that joke. It's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. It's dinner time. <laughs> Uh, you can find me everywhere on social media is at Surly Amy, and you can go to SurlyRamix.com to find my jewelry and everything else I do. And you can find me at One Car Workshop on your social media platform of choice, or you can go to OneCarWorkshop.com, or just follow the sound of the barking dog. <laughs> so that's it for this week. If you're listening to the show on iTunes, please, you know, take five minutes of your life leave us a rating tell us what you think because we really do appreciate the feedback and it helps us grow our audience which is really important so that's all three of us have hit our microphone so far awesome <laughs> you can also find us on twitter facebook and instagram at makers hustle if you want to ask a question give feedback or suggest a show topic because some of the most interesting shows we've done have come from uh, listener emails so please keep sending them yeah, we love that. You can contact us through social media or send an email to info at makershustlepodcast.com. There's also a contact form on the website if that's easier. Once again, thank you so much for listening. We really do love having you here. And while this show might be over, the hustle, the never, hustle stops. never stops. And until you and need to take care of over, yourself. The hustle. And never take stops. care of yourself, everybody. Don't forget to eat yeah. and sleep. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. 33 episodes. Jeez, wait. I'm proud of us. We've been doing this for 33 weeks. 34, because we missed one. Oh, 32. We're good like that.